Hey everybody, welcome to The Novelist. The Novelist is a little game that I found a long, long while ago. Uh, it's made by these people, and it released around this time. And uh, from what it seems like you play as a ghost in this family's vacation home, and you need to help them settle their differences. So let's get into it. Stop. Yes. This is it. Wow, look at this place. Still can't believe the deal we got. Where's my room? Right up there, buddy. This is... Wow. Forest, cliff, ocean. They've got it all, baby. Ooh, look at the light on the dining room table. All right. I suppose this is my house then, as ghost. Space to read. Mr. Kaplan, welcome to your home for the summer. We're very excited to have you. This is one of our most popular properties, and I'm sure you and your family will have a memorable visit. We have you booked through August 31st. Your security... Yeah. Ah, I can read. Your security deposit has cleared, and our cleaning service freshened everything up on Saturday. You can buy groceries at McClendon's in town, and if you'd like to eat dinner out, there are quite a few restaurants on Meriden Avenue, just off Fairview. If you have any questions, or if you run into any trouble at all, please don't hesitate to call Pete Fuller, Hanniger Rentals, Sydney Bluffs, Oregon. Ooh. And we live in the lamps. The Kaplans can't see you while you're possessing a light fixture, so possession is the safest way to explore. You can jump from one light fixture to another in order to move through the house unseen. And reach the office upstairs. Which one's the office? I assume it's going to be the only one that we can get into. Oh, there it is. Ooh. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Just me and Dan. Your goal in each chapter is to figure out how the dilemma facing Dan, or sorry, just to figure out the dilemma facing Dan, and decide how he should resolve the situation. Each member of the family desires a different outcome and it's up to you to decide which path to take. If you remain undetected and learn the desires of more than one character, you can uncover compromises that will help the family. Writer's block. Oh man, don't I know that. Return to the office up the stairs. Where's Dad? Dan's journal's on the desk. Read it. Okay. So we come out. Writer's Here's block. Me. I can't believe I just wrote that. Writer's block. There, again. Those two words are apparently the only damn thing I can write. I don't think it's been this bad since high school. Mr. Holder's class, an essay about Faulkner. Dan Kaplan, little-known author of Tramer's Way and Windsong, has run out of steam. Mm. 
Closed my eyes last night and saw a literary register article about myself. That was the first line. Paul wants three chapters next week, and so far I've got 2,000 words so sloppy I can barely read them. I cannot blow my schedule. Paul said Grovefield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Why did this happen as soon as we got here? This was supposed to simplify things, but so far it's been nothing but staring at a blank page. <sighs> Maybe a walk will help. Or a long drive. Or a drink. Man, don't I know writer's block. Oop. Each character has a number of writings or drawings to discover. You found one of Dan's. Now that you know what's troubling him, you should search the house for him to discover more about his dilemma. An upstairs bedroom. Reach that from here? No, but I can reach that one. Oh, I like this. It's a little puzzly how you can get around. Oh, this is the son's room. That's the bathroom. That's gotta be his room, though. Hello, father. When you look at a character, you can press space to see what they're thinking about. What are you thinking about? This doesn't work. Uh-huh. The cloud around Dan's head indicates that he's remembering specific moments from the past. You have the ability to explore his memories to learn more about the current chapter. Approach Dan from behind and press space to enter his memory. Ooh, okay. You're not gonna turn around, right, Dad? Haha, -ha, you wouldn't. Hello. Oh. Now that you've entered Dan's memory, you can explore it freely. Follow the sounds to locate different moments that are on his mind. When you find a specific moment, press space to uncover more about what's troubling Dan in this chapter. You can exit Dan's memory whenever you wish and can return to it any time by, by approaching him from behind and pressing space. Oh, and I can possess his lamps as him in a memory. Or am I just his memory? What are you thinking about? Do you think coming here will help? Do you think coming here will help? It has to. It has to. What else are you thinking about? Is it your son? Oh no, it's just you again. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. It got me thinking. Did we swing the pendulum too far just to get him away from those bullies? Kids can bounce back quick sometimes. What if this is the worst thing we could have done? Then he asked how Daddy's book was going, and without even thinking, I said, Great, my man. Felt awful right away. It's a white lie, sure, but why not be honest? When he was younger, he was just a bundle of physical needs, but now he's like a mental, emotional sponge. He's around Linda and me all the time, and I can see him changing every day in a thousand small ways. That scares the hell out of me. What am I teaching him with a white lie? Yeah. Yep. You found all the moments in this character's memory. You can come back and re-examine them at any time. Okay. I'm into the lamp next to you. Oh. Dan, we're back! Hi, Mom. Hey, Tom. Is that glittering there? Now that Linda and Tommy are home, you should look for their clues, discover what's on their mind, and explore their memories. Stay out of their sight and use possession to keep from alerting them. If you remain undetected, you can earn additional opportunities to influence their story. That's... Wait. Don't turn around. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, I hope this reaches you before you leave for the summer. I know we went over this in my office, but I think Tommy is a wonderful child and I'll feel better putting my recommendation in writing. Children develop at different speeds, and Tommy shows no signs of a serious learning disorder. So the most important thing is to be patient and supportive. Make sure he does his reading exercises each day in a calm, loving environment. Make sure not to show disappointment which he, when he struggles, which he will at first. Show encouragement when he succeeds, as self-confidence is critical at this age. If he fails to make progress with the exercises I've included, you may want to take him to the local pediatrician for local recommendations. Sorry, further recommendations. I hope this is of some help. I look forward to seeing Tommy this September. Miss McMillan. And this? Oh. Yeah, okay. Ideas. Alice listens in on the phone call. Problem. Ruins sympathy for Alice. Solvable? Probably not. Too cheap and easy. 
Seen at the lake? Alice sees them there. Could definitely work. Come up, it's for Scott. Alice stays innocent. Sarah sees who Scott really is. Yeah, I think that works. You've discovered enough about this character to find out how they want to solve this chapter. Read their thoughts. Oh, Papa. Where's my notebook? Oh, to choose this character's outcome, find the object in blue text and select it. You can continue exploring the house if you'd like to discover what the other characters want to do. Your desired objects can be mm -hmm. by pressing tab. Okay, so he wants his notebook. That's if we want to go with his solution. But... The rest of the family have options too. What are you thinking about, kid? Maybe we can play later. Who wants to play? Hi, Mom. So much hey, time Dad. to paint. Hey, bud. Hey, what's up? Not much. Is Dad coming in here? You better not. Okay, good. Stay away. Let me in your brain. Painting. That's cute. What you thinking about? You. You're thinking about you. What's up? I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces for Tommy. If he knows there's something wrong, he's not showing it. We told him this is just a fun family vacation, and he seems to like it here so far. But this might be it for Dan and me. Neither one of us has said Ooh. the word yet, but... I know it's right there under the surface. We've been dancing around it. I can't even bring myself to write the word here. Writing it would be almost as bad as saying it, because once it's there, it becomes real, a thing we have to deal with. I'm not ready for that yet. We agreed to make this a fresh start. I meant it, I think he did too. Now we just have to treat each day like a new beginning. Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Ooh. Okay. Thank you. I promise. Me too. Me too. Me too. Okay. Gotta read that. We gotta look at that. Gotta make sure nobody's. Whoa. Oh, you can press E to make the light flicker. Just cause nearby characters to investigate the light fixture for a short period of time. That's how I get her away from the painting. Okay, I think I can get to the journal though. It's such a crazy thought, the three of us all alone in this house all summer. I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe it has a raccoon problem or a toilet that backs up. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, and I'm painting again. I got set up today. I felt a buzz right away. So much time to work. I haven't had a space like this in forever, probably since I left the studio. I went straight into a new piece today, got lost, looked up to see it was two hours later. I think this new one has promise, though I still have some rust to shake off. Speaking of which, I'm going to go check on Dan and see if his new office is doing anything for him. He's pretty frustrated, but he has to figure something out soon, or this place won't be any different than home. Couldn't have said it better myself. Oh my god, the light again. The light again. It's... what is his name? Tommy? Tommy and Dad playing board games. Yeah, the light again, girl. I know, crazy. Where's your yeah, son? Where's Dad? Would he be up in his room? Oh dear. That's a paper I have to read. Oh, hey, Pop. Pop, wait, come over here. Just changed the bolt. Yeah, 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 you did. You did. It's crazy. Pick up more canvases. Arts are anywhere in town. Galleries or studios. Oh, shit. Hi, kid. Wish I could help Daddy. I'll get it later. Yeah, don't we all? There's a paper right there. Shit. Okay, kid. You wanna come over here? Whoa, it's messed up again. Yeah, it's messed up again. Crazy. Don't look at me. Paul, good to hear from you. Listen, things are taking a little longer than expected. 
I feel good about this one, but I haven't quite brought some of the threads together. It's just an execution hiccup, not a lack of ideas. This is the most complicated book I've ever tried to write, and let's just say I have a newfound respect for guys like Dickens and Joyce who can juggle ten threads at once without getting lost. I'm figuring some of this stuff out the hard way, I guess you could say. Anyway, the outline I sent you is still good, those are still the beats, those are still the themes I plan to explore. I'll keep you posted, Dan. Okay. Where are you going, Tommy? I need to get in your brain. Why'd it do that? That's crazy, I know. Okay, nobody else come down. Hey, kid. Hmm. Digging up some dirt. Are there any other kids? We'll have to find out. There sure are. Right, what else are you remembering? Something upstairs. In your room. Hey, kid. He is sad. Exit Tommy's memory, then read his thoughts to see what he- Oh, right, I have to go read, um... <laughs> Me and Daddy can play Race and Roger. What do you want? We could have a bottle of wine and hang out like we yeah. used to. No distractions here, just us. Let's... Huh. Last thing you need... <laughs> Excuse me, I was trying to have a thought. The last thing you need, sir. Get your ass back here, don't run away from me. The last thing you need is to be thinking about your book and focusing on your book. Have a date night with your wife and play Race and Roger with your kid. Where do you keep the wine in this house? Hi. There it is. How do I get to it? Unless she comes in the dining room, we're good. Selecting the wine will choose Linda's resolution for this chapter. Dan and Tommy will be disappointed. However, if you've discovered Dan and Tommy's desired outcome and haven't spooked them, you'll be able to find a compromise with one of them in the next chapter. Press escape to continue playing or E to choose. Okay. Yeah. Have a date night with your wife. You goddamn need it. The Kaplans are asleep. Explore the house for clues about its past, then whisper your decision to Dan. Sleep, that means I get to wander around. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Let's see. Ooh. By playing carefully and learning the desires of more than one character, you've earned the ability to find a compromise with any character you didn't spook. You can only select one character for a compromise. Oh. Yeah, let's let's play with your kid. He's he's having a hard time in school. And if I know anything, it's because he just wants he just needs time with his dad. From the desk of Harold Baxter, 1948. Mr. Lowry finally gave in and agreed to let me inspect the house. I believe he simply grew tired of hearing me ask, although I think deep down he knows I'm correct. A property like this simply doesn't change hands every year or two without a reason. Hi, it's me, I'm the reason. I noticed the pattern when I was cleaning out old files and this house kept coming up. It's changed owners seven times in the last 13 years. I began digging and not a single one of the sales was financially motivated. People just seem to keep deciding that they'd rather live somewhere else. Which doesn't add up in my mind. The view is striking. The isolation and privacy alone make it a great property. The remoteness can't be an issue. Certainly no one who can afford this kind of home needs to work for money. It's a mystery, but that's why I'm here. Hey, it's me. <laughs> I'm the problem. As usual. It's got good bones. I don't know what I'm looking at. But it's nice. Puppy dude. Hey, kid. Yeah. 
here. Tommy's Compromise. No more clues anywhere. We'll talk to Dan in a moment. Let me just check the office. Hello? Clues? Me too. I'm shy at a typewriter. Oh, Chinese checkers. And regular checkers and chess. All three variations. Ooh, hello. Uh, so this is the next day after the previous one. Standing in the kitchen drinking coffee and admiring the view, I simply don't understand it. Who wouldn't want to see this every morning? That appears to be the great question of 451 Timberline Road. I slept very well last night. It's a good thing the previous owners left the house furnished. It was just about as quiet as anywhere I'd ever been. The only sounds today are the ocean and a few birds. After I finished breakfast, I plan to begin my inspection. I was inspecting the upstairs walkway to make sure the railing was sturdy when I saw something odd downstairs. I'm not certain I can describe what it was, and I've already talked myself halfway out of thinking it was anything at all. It was probably just a trick of the light coming through those big windows. Hi, it's me. I'm the trick of the light. Why is she doing this? is my favorite option as well. There you go. Good. Dan. We all have those chapters. They suck and you hate them, but that's gonna be the chapter that really helps. Alright. Big news, Barb. I'm putting on a show. Can you believe it? I've already got butterflies. It's been so long. I'm glad it's a small gallery so I can ease my way back into things a bit. And I want to do it right. I'd forgotten how much work goes into things that aren't painting when it's time to put on a gallery. You know I could never stand all the logistical rigmarole. Plus, I have a piece I really want to finish before the show. So much to do. I want to take it seriously and go through the whole process, though, because if the show goes well, who knows? Hope to hear from you, and hope you can come, of course. Yours always, Linda. Cute. Big news, Barb. No, Barb. Barb, you're gonna get me killed. Is that something? It sure is. Mrs. Kaplan, we're thrilled to be exhibiting your work Thursday. I know this all came together a little last minute, but our secretary is only part-time and she sometimes gets behind. I've sent along some forms and samples for the ad we plan to run in this week's paper. I know it's probably the last thing you want to worry about right now, but what's the point of putting on a show if no one knows about it? Anyhow, I know this is all a bit hectic, but while we might be small, we have a lot of heart and we're very excited about your show. Nicole Adams, Westlake Gallery. Oops. I wanted to look at that. Me and Dad on the beach. Yeah, kid. What you got? Put it right on my table by my rocket. What? What are you putting right on the table by your rocket? Be just like Pirate Pete on TV. Mom has reservations for Friday. Hope we can find a babysitter. For what? I can pick one. Dad, work straight through till Monday. Worst idea, buddy.
Where are you going, Mom? Got a paper here, paper there. Sick. Let me out. Paul. Hey, man, if I'd known my letter would set you off like that, I wouldn't have written. My fault. Let's both just calm down. I see now that it was stupid to ask if you knew any art agents. That's like you asking me if I know any professional sculptors. Dumb question, point taken. But believe me, no one's more worried about the schedule than I am. I think about it every day. I can't get away from it. Most nights I start thinking about it and can't stop. My heart starts beating out of control and I have to get up and try to work just to calm down. I'm not slacking off, man. I shouldn't have made you think I was focused on anything else. I'll get everything sorted out. Seriously. Dan. Oh, Danny boy. Ooh, just in time. Hey, buddy. I have to make sure no one here bullies Tommy. Yeah, we sure do. I don't trust you in the same room, ma'am. Can you... I'll go find Tommy. Hold on. Let's go, let's go bully Tommy. Speaking of. This one to this one. Hey, kid. Hey, you wanna look at this? Why does it keep doing that? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Let me in. Alright. Right here. I've already read that memory of yours, Tommy. You still have the same memory of- Are you still thinking about the dirt? No. You're over here. Cool. Can we go? Right down there. Right down there. This is the cliff that goes to the ocean. He wants to go to the beach with his dad. Play Race and Roger longer. Why'd it do that? I don't know. Daddy said he'd be my buddy here. They're both moving around. Hey, can you look at this lamp again? It broke again. Yeah! Whack. Read your paper. This note good for one at all. Take my bucket to the beach with daddy. Why did he do that? Oh, kiddo. I'm thinking you're on the back burner tonight. No offense. Okay, good. Neither of them are here. In arts and entertainment news, the Westlake Gallery has announced a show by visiting artist Linda Kaplan. A resident of Laurenton, Miss Kaplan is visiting the coast with her family and has completed a new series she describes as an expression of restrained emotion using society's imposition on nature as a lens. Details of the show will be forthcoming. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. So. Hey. Hi. Oh, downstairs are we? I'm thinking priority. Compromise and then swap with the kid later. Come in. Hey, what's wrong? You you're not gonna answer your wife even in your memory? Writer's block turned into writer's fog or something like that. I never found my notebook. I guess it's just gone. Did we lose it in the move? Leave it at home? I ended up having Alice find out about Scott and Sarah by overhearing a phone call. That's awful. Having Alice eavesdrop on them completely kills the sympathy I've been trying to build for her. What a junk solution. But I had to get something down and move on. I guess that was it. Hopefully I can come back and fix it later. Of course you can. There's always time to come back and fix it later. Meanwhile, I need a lamp. Like yesterday. Alright, what's your solution? Three paragraphs describing the weather? What else? Give me more thoughts. Should make her breakfast in bed. Your wife? Yeah, you should. Oh, you have so many papers on here, Chief. Okay, don't look at me. It just Stay never there. stops. Every time I plot something I think will hold together, it falls to pieces. Oh, jeez. This thing was supposed to be done months ago, but the further I get, the harder it is to make it all work. Nothing's ever as simple as it seems at first. I'll think about a problem for days, finally come up with a fix, 
and then realize it breaks something somewhere else. I can barely hold all the threads together. Sometimes this thing just feels too big for me and I want to burn it and walk away. But what else would I do? And the deadlines don't help either. I can't think harder or faster. This stuff comes when it comes. And getting stressed out about it just makes it harder to get the words down. Like right now, I'm writing about the thing instead of working on the thing. Damn it, Dan, get to work. The guinea pigs are chewing on their house. Yeah, just reading about books. Hey, Dan. Mm. Oh, I can't say that. I uh, I'm just gonna wait until you leave, I think. this one. Mom! What are you thinking about? You? I knew we should have eaten something with that wine last night. My head is killing me. It was totally worth it, though. We put on some music and hung out on the couch, all cuddled up like we were freshmen again. He didn't talk about his book once. We got a little too into a discussion about whose favorite band from college was still the best and we accidentally woke Tommy up. We got him settled back down and decided to call it a night too. Well, except for... I better not write about that part. Ooh! Linda! Getting it! Uh, you're downstairs. You're in your art room. Of course you are. What is it, Mommy? I don't know yet, honey. I should burn the cage. What do you mean? Dan could take care of the promo forms on the coffee table. Mm -hmm. He could. But will he? Has he stopped typing? That's not any better. I need you to go away. Get. There's gotta be a better lamp that I can pull him to. Hey, Dad. No. Damn it, Dad. Okay, fine. Come look at Again? this. Get up. Yeah, get up. Gonna be ballsy. Friday, rap draft. Saturday, fam day. Sunday, dialogue pass. Fix Alice revisions. Chain myself to the typewriter. Oh, never mind. Okay, so... Sorry, kiddo. You're definitely back burning today. Mama's gonna be a little stressed. Where the promo is? Is this it? That's gotta be it. I think I got all the papers. I just need to get him out of the office. Or at least away from the typewriter. Up. I just checked that yesterday. Yeah, I know. You just... Ah, fuck you. Linda! Continue to be distracted. No, 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 no. Pa Papa. Get back Go up. On. Oh, I'm so Sorry. flickery today. Look at it. Gonna focus on him, focus on his book, and then we're gonna compromise with Linda. Cause I feel bad. I feel I I want her art thing to go well. Let's see, January seventeenth. I'm not certain there's something strange with the light here. It must be those windows. I was reviewing old deeds in the living area and saw some sort of a flash of light out of the corner of my eye. I would assume the elevation would put the ocean too far away for the sun to reflect off a wave, but perhaps not. I looked, but there was nothing there except a strange shimmer. 
like heat above the asphalt of a hot road. It dissipated almost immediately. Perhaps some concentration of the light caused it. But on to work. I've begun cataloging possible options for the property. I owe Mr. Lowry a report by the 24th. Okay, so he knows about me. Well, he doesn't know about me. He's seen me. Is there any notes in here? The painting's coming along good. That's, like, really good for a day. I think. I don't know about art. Sorry, kid. You got your compromise. Maybe, maybe if you have more pressing needs tomorrow. Dan could, Tommy needs. What about oh, the office? Hmm? What about my needs as ghost of the house? Being very rude. January 19th. I failed to log my activities yesterday as nothing of note occurred. There have been no tricks of the light for two days, and I've grown certain that the ones I saw were reflections from the ocean improbably reaching the house. I've been able to focus on the task at hand, and I'm suitably pleased with the condition of the property. I have also reached a decision on how to proceed. It came to me this morning as I stood in the conservatory, admiring the beauty of the forest. I hadn't begun my work yet, and was thinking of nothing in particular when an, when an idea came into my head fully formed. I was surprised that it appeared with such clarity, but it's not unheard of for the, mom, for the mind to ponder a question in the subconscious. As for the idea, it is quite simple. I will buy the house myself. Oh, so we must have liked him. If a man's spending three days in my house, and I'm already influencing him to stay... Come here, Dan. Why is she Dan couldn't get past the thought that missing yet another deadline would drive one more nail into his career's coffin, so he holed up in his office and wrote all weekend. He found a rhythm and stayed with it as long as he could, eating meals at his desk instead of with his family. The non-stop clacking of the typewriter filled the house. Dan couldn't find the time to write Linda's promotional materials from scratch, so he offered to stay up late Saturday night to help her fine-tune the copy. Her take on the ad, heavier on visuals than originally planned, needed only minor wordsmithing, and the late night paid off with an ad they were proud of. Tommy spent Saturday playing by the window, looking out at the beach, and wishing his dad wasn't so busy doing grown-up things. He tried to use the shovel that came with his bucket as a jump for his cars, but it was too light and kept sliding out of the way. It was weeks before he played with his bucket again. Sorry, Tommy, but... tough. Here, Tommy just went upstairs. Oopsie. Bob, sorry it's been so long since I've written. Things have been hectic around here, and I'm trying to figure out a way to get things back on track. I don't really want to get into it, but we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions right now. Nothing hurtful, just competing priorities, I guess. Although those can get worse and worse over time. I mean, Dan and I, before we got up here, you know we'd started to drift. Look at that. I said I didn't want to get into it, and I did anyway. Enough about me. Please tell me you're doing well, and I hope this doesn't stress you out too much. I promise to write a happier letter soon. Yours always, Linda. Okay. Nothing bad. Just priority differences. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan. I want to stress that it's perfectly normal for some children to fall behind in a specific area. Tommy may be struggling with reading comprehension, but his verbal and visual abilities are excellent. That said, he won't catch up on his own. He will need support from both of you. I recommend that you do the attached exercises with Tommy every weekday morning for one to two hours. He'll be unable to focus exclusively on these for two straight hours, so you'll need to take intermittent breaks, but use your judgment and stay with it as long as you feel he can stay engaged. 
I suggest that you do your sessions in the morning before he tires himself out and becomes distracted. I feel confident that with a supportive environment and dedicated exercise, he will catch up to the other children in his class. Please be in touch if you have any questions, Dr. Donald Samuels. Okay, so Tommy's still struggling. You want to take a break later? I'd love that. Oh, hello. I should learn about grown-up problems at some point. Uh, we'll get the two of you when you're not together. Hey, kid. Um. Hey, buddy. You can get it. I believe in you, Tommy. Over here, look at the light. Messed up. Kids are bullying him. Want to come over here, Tommy? This place is messed up. Yeah, it sure is. He doesn't want his book. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ, Tommy. Come here, one more time, buddy. What's wrong with that thing? Come in, buddy. Will it make me smarter? Honey, listen to me. You are smart. You are smart, kid. Fuck the bullies. Are you in your dad's room? No, you're downstairs in the art room. Hey, kiddo. Oh, the painting! Looks good. And he's, he's drawing the same picture about how he's sad. Man, you've really been working on this, huh? What do you think? Man said to do the Lonnie book every morning. Why does it keep doing that? I don't know. Oh, good, you're splitting off. Hey, Mom. good conversation today. Well, we'll have to wait and see if it was actually good, but I feel like I got my point across about family time. We've been getting a little frayed on the little things lately, and it reminded me of something Anne said one time. Love is a behavior, not an emotion. If something's important to you, you show it with your actions. We weren't doing so well with that before we got here. I told Dan my idea. I want us all to eat together at seven every night, with family time after that. Tommy's wiped out by 8.30, so we'd get a solid hour and a half as a family, and then Dan and I could have the rest of the night to ourselves. And I think seven's a reasonable request. The rest of the working world knocks off at five, right? It doesn't really matter what we do with the time, just that we spend it together. It's easy to make excuses when you've got a lot going on, which is why patterns help. I hope he feels the same way. I hope he feels the same way too, girl. I'm gonna get you to look at this one more time. This house is old. Ah, uh, yeah. But it's mine, so be nice. Again? Yeah, go look at that. Weekly outing, Tuesday movie night, family dinner, picnic, farmer's market. I'm in, Linda. No, Linda. Thank you. We barely talked yesterday. Well, you're right. I guess we've just been so busy. Did you only... There's something else up there. Hey, Linda. We just got back from the show, and I still don't know how I feel about it. The turnout was okay, and I did sell a piece. I learned a long time ago to never complain about selling anything, no matter how small. So that's good, no matter what. But part of me also feels like the glass was half empty. The promo was okay, but I think the abstract layout was a little too weird for the paper. I really should have gone with more text. Then again, it was good of Dan to have helped with that part at all, so who knows how bad it would have been without that. 
I guess I was most excited to see what kind of feelings the show would bring back up, and it was just too half-hearted to know. Disappointment and excitement in equal parts. I still have some thinking to do. Mm. Now to go find Dad. Put that on the to-do list. Where are you going? Office? Downstairs! Bitch! Actually... That's Tommy's room. This is the... Whoa, shit! Galore. Oh. Hold on. Mommy's letters. Okay, so. I don't hear any steps. Time. Time, time, time. This would all be easier if I didn't ever have to sleep. Last night after Linda went to bed, I spent some time. There's that word again. Trying to make everything fit. I even drew up a little chart. The math is simple, it doesn't work. Technically, I could still get in eight hours, assuming I don't eat or need to do anything that's not writing. But what about letters, reading, dealing with Paul? Hell, what about doing the dishes or taking out the trash? Not to mention that knocking off for the day isn't like flipping off a switch. It takes time to crawl out of my head and start functioning like a normal person again. And I can't just split it up into smaller chunks. Sometimes it takes an hour of false starts just to get going on anything usable. And stopping just sends the whole process right back to square one. Something's got to give. Yeah. Unfortunately, that something might be your marriage, Dan. Ah, oh, shit. How do I get in there? Get it there. Perfect schedule. Yeah. Write, eat, write, eat, decompress, edit, life. Ugh. Alan, this letter might come from out of the blue, but do you remember when you told me about Bobby falling behind on reading? Looks like we're there with Tommy. We knew he was struggling when we came up here, but his teacher gave us a list of books for him to work on over the break and said we should see how he responded to the change in the environment. She gave us a few sample readings and told us to keep an eye on how he was grasping the concepts. Tommy still isn't there, and long story short, the pediatrician in town knows a specialist who gave us some exercises to try. They seem pretty straightforward, but I wanted to write and see if you had any tips that helped you guys with Bobby. Damn. Just realized I didn't even ask how you've been. I'm sorry. This stuff is just a lot to think about. Dan. Yeah. Hey, you wanna grab a bite later? Well, I never even saw what Linda's... What does Linda want? Dinner around the table. <laughs> I mean, you're so reasonable, Linda. Mommy. Hey, Pumpkin. Why are, go, go back upstairs. There's something out. <laughs> oh, I gotta wait until he gets by himself. Oh, it looks like he's going. Come on, Dan. Up to your office where I can pick your brain. Room where I can pick your brain. Ugh. Except I can only get out using that lamp over there. Racing. Into your head. Gotta focus on the kid today. Whoa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have snapped. I just. 
Bring your dick down. Did it. Got it to Paul on Monday and just about dropped on the spot. Barely slept Sunday night, but damn it, I got it in. Abject terror is a pretty strong motivator. Linda understood, I guess. She had her own deadline, so at least she could identify, but in the end it was still a choice and she didn't let me off the hook. Can't blame her, really. Sometimes you just have to make tough calls. That's why they're called tough calls. Uh, okay. Well, I wouldn't have thought that way. So the kid needs to be focused on. And he's falling so behind. I think this is my favorite lamp. This is one of my favorite lamps. I can check on him. Keep an eye on who's going through here. Hmm. Yeah. Tommy. And then I guess we can compromise with Dad if he really needs the time. He can close his door and no one will bother him. Let's learn more about me. January 22nd. A final entry before I depart. The bank would no doubt prevent me from purchasing the house due to the inherent conflict of interest, but given its history of frequent ownership changes, I feel confident the mortgage, bleh, the mortgage department would be glad to have the property off their hands. I believe I can set up a trust, or perhaps a shell company, and convince Mr. Lowry that we must part with the property for less than market value. I feel certain I can appeal to his conservative nature. I believe it will prove to be a shrewd investment as a rental property, and I think I now understand why people do not stay for extended periods. I find myself unable to describe the feeling precisely, but in my time here I have found my mind drifting in strange ways, as if it was not always my own. But the natural beauty is undeniable. Perhaps shorter visits are a wiser use of the property. Yes, I believe that is a fine idea indeed. And you know what? I'm inclined to uh, agree with you, sir. Up we go. You're not dumb, kiddo. Not dumb at all. Papers? Any more journals? Oh, there's one right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Diary of Claire Bradford, September 4th, 1961. We're here, so why don't I feel more excited? This was supposed to be fun, just Roger and me. Mom and Dad think we're here with Ben and Lori, but of course, that was just a trick. Nope, just Roger and me in this big house by the ocean for the whole week. I'm sad to see that there's no piano here, but I suppose a week without practice won't do me too much harm. I guess maybe being alone with Roger that long is what's making me feel nervous. But why should that be? He's my fiancé, after all. If I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with him, I shouldn't be worried about spending the week with him, should I? Everyone has second thoughts before they get married, right? Girl, I don't know. The ghost will see to you. Compromise with Dad. Sorry, Mom. I know. Why is she so Dan didn't want Tommy to start another school year behind, so he committed to helping the little man for two hours every morning. Having both of his parents there helped Tommy's confidence as much as his reading, and their morning practices became an event they all looked forward to. Dan reached a compromise with his family. He would make room in his schedule during the day, but when his office doors were closed, he wasn't to be disturbed. He desperately wanted longer, uninterrupted writing blocks, but made the best of the shorter sessions he was able to fit in. Linda and Tommy got used to eating dinner without Dan, and most nights he stopped work just long enough to kiss Tommy goodnight before heating up his dinner in the oven. Dan and Linda still found time to catch up a few nights a week, but most of the time they were ships passing in the night, each on their own course. Yeah. 
an old habit. And that's how the Kaplan's first month at the house on the cliff came to an end. Three weeks. Dan sent a work in progress to his agent, who was glad to see that Dan had gotten back on track. They were both hopeful that Dan could maintain his focus and write a book that delivered on the promise of his work so far. A few nights later, Dan and Linda got a babysitter and drove into town for a date. They spent more than they should have on a bottle of wine and had such a good time that they didn't notice everyone else leaving. When they finally realized they were the last ones in the restaurant, they apologized and left after giving their waitress a generous tip. The next day, Dan made good on a promise to take Tommy into the woods and look for arrowheads. So they drove to the site, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, to a settlement and got to work. Dan and Tommy had fun digging around in the dirt, getting messy and looking for artifacts. They found a handful of arrowheads, which Tommy proudly showed his mother when they got home. They still had two more months on the coast, and their story was just beginning.